Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Haido Sugiyama. I'm a senior principal technologist at Red Hat. I'm here with uh, Seisho Yasukawa, uh, NDT Network Technology Laboratory. Today, uh, we are going to share with you a uh, new normal activity we call the Carrier Edge Pass. First off, I'll be sharing with you the concept of the Carrier Edge Pass. After that, uh, Seisho will be talking about NTT project for Carrier Edge Pass. Probably you know about uh, bimodal IT. Bimodal IT is a two-tiered IT operational style. SOR is a, a system of record, and SOE is a system of engagement. SOR allows for the creation of the system and the process, which are the stable and the predictable. Carrier-grade infrastructure development is a, one of the SOR style at this stage. And the SOE allows for the creation of the system and the process, which are the agile and the fast. SOE focus on the DevOps and the continuous improvement, we call the Kaizen in Japan. Carrier Edge Pass can harmonize the SOR and the SOE style. Carrier Edge Pass provides an application DevOps environment for the main business player using the OpenShift container platform on top of the OpenSAC NABH computing infrastructure. That's uh, based on the uh, SOR style. There was a news. FCC is going to repeal the net neutrality. Maybe you know that. Uh, most of the telecom carriers currently don't have computing resource and storage resource at the Teleco H node. That's why they need a big pipe in the, their network to the cloud, or somehow they want to control the traffic to the cloud. Carrier edge pass potentially can change the situation. Carrier edge pass can harmonize the cloud environment and the edge computing environment. It will be decentralized, but it's interoperable with the cloud data center. Carrier Edge Pass can provide a cloud-native service at the Teleco Edge node. There are many potential use cases. Contents Delivery Network is a classic example for the Cloud Edge, as you might know. And uh, hybrid, hybrid Cast TV is a potential use case. You'll be able to add the HTML5 format from the Teleco H node to the hybrid cast TV that will receive the 4K broadcast stream along with the local service provider's data. AI is also one of the potential use case. We like that AI intelligent to the Teleco H node with the GPU. We usually call the edge heavy computing in Japan. And uh, IoT robotics and uh, connect car are the major use case. Automotive, edge, automotive industry needs a huge data for the VTX. According to the Automotive Edge Computing Consortium, the data, monthly data volume between car and uh, cloud will be increased to 10 hexabyte by 2025. But most of the data are the geo-oriented data. For example, when you drive the car in the Austin, you don't need data for the Tokyo city, right? So there's an opportunity to manage the geo-oriented data at the each Teleco H node. Carrier Edge Pass can give you the flexibility to develop the new business on top of the uh, Teleco H node. NTT is now spending a resource to develop the new architecture for Carrier Edge Pass based on the new business concept called uh, B2B2X. B2B2X means the uh, NTT business to the main player's business to the main player's user or devices. 
So main player we call the uh, middle B can use the DevOps environment to develop the new service to deliver the, their users or devices through the entity's carrier edge path infrastructure. So any network resource and the security service will be provided by NTT for middle B. For further detail, uh, Seisho will be talking about uh, NTT project. Seisho, over to you. Thank you, Hyde. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Seisho Yasuka from NTT. And I'm honored to have an uh, uh, opportunity to present to you our activity today. Actually, I'm belonging to NTT Lab. And I am uh, leading an architecture team. And we are studying future network design for 5G IoT time frame. Uh, I would like to, so I would like to discuss, uh, present to you uh, our study result related to edge pass technologies. As shown in the figures, NTT want to collaborate with middle B partners, such as IoT service providers and content providers to develop new market, digital market. So as for back end B position, NTT want to provide some uh, collaboration platform to middle B uh, partners. Uh, network is a strong tool for the platform, but I would like to guess how carriers network look like from middle B users. The network is very attractive because we have a lot of access line to the users. But I think on the other hand, a network would not be attractive because lack of flexibilities and long lead time to tune up and the service and the service deployment. So I'm afraid that many people say that the network do not have to play more than a pipe. Is that really okay? I don't think so. By putting the function in the network, we can support for real-time control for self-driving cars. We can support mass data processing for IoT MCM services. We can support flexible service composition for SDX service. Even a middle B partner can offload non-business logic, such as security issues. Uh, security is very important factor to implement the service, but sometimes it is difficult to handle. So if middle B partner can offload the security issues to the carrier, they can concentrate on main uh, their service logics. Then I would like to uh, discuss the difference between the carrier grade and cloud natives. Uh, in the conventional, traditional carrier grade, a service is developed by full scratch base. So dedicated equipment and uh, dedicated service scenario is necessary. So waterfall-based uh, uh, service development is useful. But the, on the other hand, uh, in the cloud native world, we can uh, develop our service by customizing our template. So we can, that means we can utilize the common equipment and automation and workflow and APIs. So agile based uh, service development is possible and we, a continuous uh, service deployment is possible. I think we, uh, these cloud native uh, features are very attractive. So we decided to incorporate these feature on top of uh, our carrier edge parts. Uh, this slide shows uh, service, our uh, service example target. We want to uh, build 
services combining uh, cloud uh, combining cloud component and network component. For example, uh, we can construct a, a managed IoT service by installing IoT application within the public cloud and by installing uh, IoT gateway within the uh, edge uh, DC cloud within the carrier network. Uh, we should monitor network status and we should change the uh, network configuration automatically. This uh, example shows we change the service chainings. We incorporate the DPI and the cleansing, cleanser uh, to check the malicious flows and eliminate the attack packet. In this way, uh, we career and middle BP partner can uh, collaborate. We want to accomplish this kind of uh, collaboration using uh, this platform. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, flexibility and uh, agility is very important. So we would like to introduce uh, smart pipe using the carrier edge pass. As you know, a conventional pipe only provides a connection between user and application and very stable. On the other hand, smart pipe, pipe uh, with smart pipe, uh, we can uh, utilize smart pipe as multiple purpose and uh, change the uh, uh, pipe condition in uh, very dynamic manners. Uh, for example, as for CDN, we can uh, put the CDN cache and the TCP booster within the connection. And as for security, we can uh, put the DPI and the cleanser within the pass. Uh, pipe. And if we want to uh, check the malicious flow, uh, we can uh, change the network conditions, uh, con configuration, so that Grenzan can eliminate the attack packet. To realize this kind of smart pipe, we needed to arrange necessary function on demand basis and change the network condition dynamically. So uh, we need a uh, new architecture. This uh, slide shows uh, carrier edge pass architectures. Uh, we would like to, uh, we will introduce edge pass within a uh, uh, carrier network and uh, we will locate function pools. Within a function pool, we will uh, prepare some uh, service functionality such as HTTP proxy load balancer or uh, uh, cache or DDoS mitigation and so on. These are functions we think it is useful for a middle P partner to utilize when they construct the service. Uh, middle P partner uh, will construct a service by combining a CPE function and uh, function on the edge parts and the function on the public cloud using the smart pipe. They configure the service uh, using the API. Then our uh, orchestrator and the SDN controller install necessary function within the network and the control the service condition. Uh, these kind of uh, architecture is necessary, I think. So, to, to prove the uh, concept, uh, we perform the, uh, we developed the POC environment. I would like to discuss uh, our developed uh, scenario. This is a day one scenario. Uh, as shown in the figure, we carry a provide IoT service platform on IPv6 network infra, and the IoT service provider Provide, uh, provide robot remote monitoring service utilizing a service platform provided by us. And the carrier operate uh, core uh, MPLS VPN network infrastructures and access network and data center infrastructures. 
Within the data center, we have NFBI and the container nodes. And utilizing the IPv6 uh, network catalog, we can uh, construct CPE and V6 routers and DHCP servers and then DNS. So that uh, basic IPv6 communication is established. Then we prepare uh, IoT service catalog for middle B partners, IoT uh, service providers. Uh, middle B partner only have to prepare a robot controlled application and only uh, have to customize uh, catalogs. And after that, our controller installs the IoT uh, service plan on top of our infrastructures. In this way, uh, uh, IoT uh, monitoring service is deployed and the robot can uh, perform name resolutions and uh, IPsec authentication and uh, IPsec tunnel is established uh, and uh, robot uh, monitoring service can be launched. Uh, we also developed, developed day two scenarios. Uh, this is a managed IO, uh, security service. In this scenario, let's see the sequence. Uh, assume the robot controller is hacked by the attacker, then uh, malicious uh, communication starts. Because we have installed the probe routers and it has a white list based filter, they notice that uh, malicious uh, communication occurs. So, uh, router uh, noticed uh, syslog to, uh, to the fluent D and the last alert. Uh, detect the uh, uh, suspicious flow. So uh, Elastor Alert invoked the workflow engine Stackstorm, and Stackstorm uh, launched the second workflow. Stackstorm uh, set up a mirroring parse and uh, launched the security analyzers. Then uh, uh, flow uh, mirror to the security analyzer. After security analyzer performed the detailed uh, security analysis, uh, they detect the specific attacks. Uh, so uh, a security analyzer uh, noticed this uh, by syslog. Again, uh, Stackstorm launched a new workflow and uh, set up a steering pass and launched the cleansers. So attack flow is there to the cleansers and cleanser to uh, eliminate the attack flow. In this way, uh, we can eliminate the uh, attack flow. Uh, this slide shows the uh, POC uh, environment. Uh, utilizing uh, these kind of application, including OpenShift, uh, uh, we can easily uh, develop the POC environment. And this slide shows a screen image. Uh, utilizing the workflow engine, uh, we can modify the uh, service control mechanism. And performing the POC, we found that the container is a very strong tool to realize a carrier edge pass. But uh, we, found also, uh, we found that we need a little bit of effort to customize. Because as for a carrier service, we want to identify user by VLAN, and we want to uh, utilize IPv6. So, uh, but current OpenShift do not uh, support this feature at this moment. So we deployed IoT gateway outside the OpenShift to accommodate VLAN and V6, V4 conversions. And because we want to accommodate a transport application which need a multiple interface on top of the container, so we deployed Docker container 
uh, to deploy DPI and probe. A conclusion. Uh, uh, I would like to propose carrier edge pass for a cloud native service. I think uh, combining carrier service and cloud service uh, via carrier edge pass, we can expand service capability and we can produce multiple attractive service. Uh, we'd like to get back, uh, get feedback from you and uh, from middle B service providers. Thank, uh, th that's, that's all, thank you. Uh, this is the uh, contact information. Yeah, we created a mailing list, uh, b2b2x at reta.com. Uh, if you have any question or you are interested in the carrier edge path, uh, please uh, contact uh, this mailing list.